Thank you very much for the kind introduction and um, nice to meet you all and welcome to this uh, again to this beautiful uh, meeting. This is the second or third time that I'm here and it's really, really a lovely, um, a lovely atmosphere and it's a great opportunity for networking and, and learn from each other. So um, I, I'm really uh, I'm presenting here uh, on behalf of Hannah Ann, who is a uh, was my uh, boss in the MR division and she has now moved to a different position as a regional director of EMRO. And so uh, you will see my name uh, repeated twice in this program. And so I, I, I've divide, decided to divide the talk, to, the talk into two parts. The first one is more related to the burden of AMR in terms of methodological approach and the second one will providing you a little bit of more information. Um, was the time now? 9.05, 9.05. Okay, good. So um, so I will provide some background, understanding the burden and future direction and conclusion. And so I will not spend any time here because you are very well aware of what the AMR is. But I think what I wanted to highlight is that AMR is a very, very complex phenomenon. I'm coming from the HIV world and I thought HIV was complicated. But, you know, EMR is far more complicated than HIV and HIV is one face, one voice, one disease, and it's very, very kind of easy to understand and to, um, in a way, um, understand what are the determinants and what are the interventions that are needed. For EMR is much more complex. And this is reflected also in the calculation in the world that people are doing to under better understand the burden of disease. Um, the, uh, this is Tedros, you, you, you are familiar with this face by now. And, and, and also he recognized along with all the senior management at WHO that AMR indeed is a critical public health threat, one of the most important public health threat uh, of, this, of this century. And we we'll all need to pay attention and address it to the best way we can. The AMR uh, is clearly creating significant health and economic burden for the society. And there are a number of important drivers that are resulting in AMR. And these have been, Ramana has highlighted many, many of those. And, uh, you know, inappropriate use of antibiotics, poor sanitation, 50% of population do not have access to a toilet. Uh, poor IPC practices, you know, Sarah will highlight that in the uh, track surveys that WHO conduct every year to monitor progress that countries are making in the implementation of national action plan, you will see that in, in, in improvement in IPC, infection prevention and control, intervention lag behind dramatically, even despite COVID. Diagnostics, we know that, you know, you know, from the uh, MAP study that 1.3% 1, 1 of laboratory in sub-Saharan Africa have access to uh, bacteriology services and even a minority of those have access to AST um, capabilities, capacity. So it's a really, and therefore the use of antibiotic, empiric antibiotic is, of course, the, the, the only choice that uh, people have international travels, ability to spread resist around the globe. And clearly we are moving to, towards a more fragile population, elderly people that have multiple underlying condition comorbidity just because they're aging uh, also, uh, you know, make them more susceptible because they're, you know, they have multiple uh, inter, you know, hospitalization or require a pr procedure, medical procedure or, or surgical procedures. So we really need to have a better understanding to, you know, to um, intervene effectively uh, and uh, use it if the most cost effective intervention to tackle AMR. We need to have a better understanding of the relative contribution of each potential driver and better understand the burden of disease caused by AMR. Now, what is the burden of disease? Um, there, is a, 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 the, the, there is a dimension of health and is a dimension of, of, of cost. Health, uh, it, it involves gouging, gouging the impact of disease and disability on bodies from the onset of illness to the outcome, sickness or disability, recovery or death. And the economic, it focuses on the financial cost of illness 
for the individuals and for the society. Now, the, um, it's important to um, understand the burden of disease because it's important to understand the impact of a health problem on a given population. And why this is relevant? Because this will help us to understand what is the intervention that we need to do and whether the intervention that we are implementing is resulting in an, in an impact. We need to be able to compare uh, diseases uh, and across across uh, different countries and across the, 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 the burden of different diseases. So we have to have a matrix to understand the impact of a disease. So, for example, if we were to say what has been the impact of COVID-19 on, on AMR, so there are a number of, you know, uh, there are a number of opinions and evidence generated, but if we don't have a solid burden of disease for AMR, we will not be able to assess the pre and post uh, and will not be able to assess effectively the impact of COVID on AMR, for example. So here, the but there are a number of important challenges in estimating AMR mortality. Um, uh, why? Because there is this important question that we always always ask ourselves, uh, which is the AMR mortality question, right? Did the patient die because of the drug resistance infection or did the patient die while having a drug resistance infection? And if the patient died because of an infection, did the patient die because the pathogen was resistant or because the infection? So that is a very, very key question that we need to ask ourselves and, and is very important while developing the, the burden of disease uh, kind of uh, methods. So there are a number of challenges to identify, to estimate the burden of disease. One is related to the unique characteristics of AMR. One is related to the data. One is the choice of the methodology. And the fourth one is related to the integration of One Health. Let me go one by one uh, quickly. So the challenges related to the unique characteristic of bacterial AMR. So again, uh, we, it's not possible to simply transfer what the, the, the approach that we've been using for HIV or malaria for AMR, because AMR is not a disease in itself, um, because uh, there is the, the challenges of having uh, the isolated bacteria that represent infection versus commensal carriage. Um, and then because um, it is the drug resistance infection, not just the presence of the pathogens that create the disease and burden. Okay, so that is clearly uh, is clearly a challenge that we are facing. Uh, a large number of bacterial species cause drug resistance infection. Each species can develop resistance to several antibiotics. And then there are genes that spread between bacteria species via plasmid as well. And so rather than being transferred by being species specific. So this also highlight the challenges of, of measuring the burden in AMR. Then there is a challenge related to the, uh, it estimates the disease burden that is the decision on which bacterial or drug resistance infection is to be included. Now, um, in the microbiology labs, the, the identification of, of uh, uh, the protocol for identifying uh, bacteria and the AST is, is really specific for each bacteria. So that's require more sophisticated competencies and resources to develop. And then there are infections with bacteria such as Staphylococcus, E. coli, that can lead to multiple clinical syndromes. And that's the, like urinary tract infection, pneumonia, for example. So that, that complicates things. Then the main, uh, for example, the main cause of morbidity and death in bacteria disease, disease is sepsis, but, but it's difficult to define sepsis. I and mean, as there have gone a number of different definitions. So in sometimes studies and, 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 uh, and um, identify and, and classify and categorize sepsis in different ways. Then we move to the, so that was the challenges related to the AMR as a, as a definition. And there are challenges related to the data. And in order to really have a better understanding of the burden of disease and calculate properly, we need to have individual patient level data that link epidemiological data, clinical data with, with microbiological data. And, uh, and we need data that are fully nationally representative of the population of interest rather than looking at the specific site in a specific hospital in a specific small population. Uh, 
And so these are really hard to find in the literature. So you can see that the many, uh, in the many gaps that we have, lack of data, laboratory quality issue. I mean, most of the, the data that we have in laboratory is not quality assured. Uh, no linkages of microbiological data and clinical data, lack of resource to, to link the data. There are bias of available information, the bias if issue with the data sharing, as well as last but not least, the duplication of data is oftentimes very challenging. So from the same patient, it's multiple data, data points are collected and used. So, um, and now moving to the third challenges with the challenges related to the methodology and um, so if, if we have a high quality information, representative data, quality laboratory, microbiological data, and uh, that link with patient data, now it, re it remains a challenge of like, how we calculate the burden of disease. And so there are different metrics that can be used. Um, and these are like the daily and disability adjusted life years or excess length of stays or years of life lost of annual mortality. So different Authors' papers utilize sometimes different approach to 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 to, um, to describe the AMR burden, um, and then this result in heterogeneity, right? Then there are different settings: uh, acquire, uh, hospital acquired infection, community acquired infection, high income country, low middle income countries. All needs to be characterized properly, and then there are different calculation approaches for the same metrics. So, for example, if you look at just mortality, um, you know, that may, may, can be calculated as a single underlying cause of death, uh, getting information from death certificates, from mortality estimate, but this is not really suitable for AMR because, of, you know, oftentimes, actually, more, always, AMR is not recorded at the cause of death, right? So people died for... Uh, for heart attack, but not necessarily for AMR, although the patient might have had you know, AMR. Um, so all the second, the second, the second matrix uh, could be uh, all cause mortality, but the challenges here is that um, there is not established you know, casual relationship between between the all cause mortality and the, and the, and the mortality. And then there is another approach, the last approach that is used, this contrafactual approach, which is looking at number of deaths occurring in the context of EMR. And these are compared with the theoretical alternative scenarios. Okay, and this is the this is the approach that oftentimes is is, is used for, for EMR. Um, and it, this is called the contrafactual approach. Um, and the alternative scenarios is, for example, comparing that of people with resistance bloodstream infection by MRSA um, and comparing the death in this population with the death of population with a susceptible uh, infection. And this is called replacement scenario. Another approach is looking at uh, comparing the death in people with MRSA bloodstream infection and replacing and comparing this with in, in people with no infection at all. And this is called addis additive scenarios. So clearly, this is um, a sub help with dealing with the multifactorial factorial causes of death, um, and and is, uh, is is closer to addressing reality uh, causality. But the problem with this is that require high high uh, quality information, high quality data, and gran granular data set, and rely of course on modeling. With all the all the caveat that model has, that we need to have a but you know clear clear assumption that could have to go into that. Um, now, but the the the, the contrafactual approach um, provide um, some uh, credible limit for the estimate. So if we compare the relative risk of that of drug resistance infection versus both the drug susceptible infection and the no infection that will give us some some confidence bound that we'll, we can use to estimate the, uh, the, the, the the relative contribution of AMR, okay? So now the last challenge that we're facing in uh, when, when calculating the burden of disease is looking at, for AMR is that uh, as Amana said, you know, we're not all only looking at what's happening in the human health sector, but we have to also look at what happened around uh, around the human health sectors 
and and see how this impacts the human health sectors. And this contribution is oftentimes difficult to measure. Um, now, the, 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 what WHO use in terms of burden of disease? So the, the, the matrix that WHO is, uh, is, is using, is recommending to use across, across diseases is the DILI, uh, which measure the difference between the current state of population health and an ideal situation where everyone, everyone reaches the age of standard life expectancy in perfect health. This is a WHO kind of recommendation on the burden of disease use. So, uh, and, and the burden is measured by the combination of two sub indicators. One is the uh, years lived with disability plus the years with, of lost life. And this matrix will help us to compare diseases that are, um, that are associated with, uh, with, with um, death um such as for example drawing or that diseases that with diseases that are not necessarily associated with with mortality but associated with disability so for example cataracts causing blindness so we can then compare two different type of diseases that, that different different kind of uh, uh, outcomes now in order to estimate the daily we need to have several information we need to gather several information we need to gather information of the attributable mortality on the prevalence of a disease and then characteristics and duration of health states. Um, WHO has developed a, um, a protocol um, that uh, measure the burden of health, health burden of AMR um, through, uh, through, through the GLASS platform. What is GLASS? So you may be familiar of, on, on, about what GLASS is. GLASS is a is a system that WHO has put in place to um, measure, uh, evaluate, assess the uh, AMR antimicrobial resistance um, uh, prevalence and, and the use of antimicrobials across the globe. And is a system that is used by Ministry of Health to communicate to WHO their national, their national data. Uh, the, uh, the glass, um, oops. Let me move here. Okay, okay. So, um, so the glass has, has, has a number of modules. Uh, one is looking at routine surveillance, so where where data are routinely transferred to WHO, the, the, the data that are done routinely at the laboratory site and Sentinel site, uh, where patient care happen, they are routinely trans transferred to WHO. Uh, and analyze on an annual basis. And then there are some focus surveillance approach where we look at our enhanced surveillance approach. Uh, and if you want, there are some uh, that, that relate to the, uh, to the gonorrhea surveillance and to the, to the candida albicans surveillance. And then there are the, the studies and, the, and, um, and, and sur specific surveys that look at vertically at the prevalence of, uh, of resistance that occur at the national level, so national prevalence surveys that comes with a specific budget and intervention from the WHO, and looking and there is a another protocol that is the attributable mortality protocol, and this is really the one I wanted to talk about here. Um, the attributable mortality protocol that that is something that doesn't. Yeah, um, the attributable mortality protocol is the um, is a methodology for estimating the attributable mortality of AMR bloodstream infection. Again, realizing that uh, the, the, the quality of the data, um, um, in, in, in particularly in low middle income countries, are, 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 are suboptimal. So the, uh, the, this protocol uh, determines how many extra patients died because of acquired drug resistance BSI and look as an outcome in hospital mortality, uh, chosen as primary outcome, mortality 30 days after the BSI with follow-up beyond hospital discharge, and then also look at um, excess length of hospitalization. Um, the the blood, bloodstream infection are the uh, infection syndrome that has been chosen for this, uh, for this protocol because of high lethality and because of the uh, minimize the the, the bias in sampling and reduce misinterpretation of the data uh, because there are, you know, right, you know, BS, of course, blood stem infection, you know, pathogens identified through, through blood culture are rarely a contaminant. And then also because 
patients with bloodstream infection are seeking care as in inpatients. So this is the population that we have, WHO has chosen as a, a, a population for the bloodstream infection mortality, uh, tributable mortality protocol. And they, they, uh, there is something, something that I'm not managing well, clearly. Why is, okay, let me do this, okay. All right. Mm. Anyway, there was a beautiful figures here, but 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 basically to shows that the the two pathogens that the WHO has targeted for the attributable mortality is the SBL E. coli and uh, and the MRSA. Uh, plus, of course, we high, we encourage countries to also measure the attributable mortality uh, during the study also of other pathogens that are, are relevant and of interest. And why those two pathogens have been selected? Because the two pathogens are relevant for the SDG uh, indicators. You know that there are 17 SDGs. The, uh, the indicator number three, the SDG three, is related to health and well-being. And within these indicators, there are 15 um, with this target, sorry, there are 15 indicators and objectives, and one of those speaks to speaks to AMR, and specifically reducing the proportion of bloodstream infection among patients due to MRSA and uh, ESBL uh, E. coli. And therefore, uh, our attributable mortality protocol that WHO is putting forward, specifically looking at these two pathogens, and this will enable also member states to report WHO for the SDG. Um, and so I just wanted to stop here for the sake of time, but just to highlight that measuring how many people die each year and why they die are really crucial for improving health and reducing preventable death. And uh, there are a lack of reliable estimates across the globe, particularly low middle income countries. And in my next talks, I will, I will, I will present you with, with, with some data. Um, so clearly we need to have more robust protocols uh, in place um, to estimate burden of disease in a reliable manner so that data are comparable across countries and over time. And of course, WHO cannot do this alone uh, at all, uh, but you know, we, with the support of a large collaborative network and 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 uh, an institution, uh, we plan to kind of scale up uh, the, 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 this, this protocol to have a reliable estimates over the coming years. And with that, I thank you very much.